Well, the, the, the voices in the New Testament that we hear in the mouths of disciples and others are in some ways commentary. And because you have Jesus' teaching, you have his parables, but then you have commentary about it in the description of people's response to his teaching and response to um, his, what he was doing and what he was, how he was acting. And, and so, um, when, when you talk about the voices, um, you, you're talking about the juxtaposition of people and the way in which they experience what he was saying and how it impinged on what their assumptions were, what their beliefs were, and what their expectations would be. And the result was that in many cases nothing they thought and said actually followed from what he was saying. There was there was conflict. And so you had you saw in people a change of mind, um, a reconsideration of their place, an involvement of their understanding. And you see this in you see this in people, you see this in the disciples. And of course you, you see it in, in Jesus. In some ways Jesus it's fascinating. Every time he met, you know there there are a couple of women that he met that were, I think, responsible for an involvement development of his thinking. One was the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. And he was faced with the, the issue as well, are there Samaritans included in this kingdom of heaven? And the answer is yes. And he stays with them three days, according to John. Then, of course, there is the... Um, Phoenician woman or Kenyanite woman and he is asked to cure, heal her daughter and he says I'm sorry I, I, I've been sent to the house of Israel to the children of Israel and she says and, and, it, and he says it would not be right for me to throw the, the bread to the dogs and she says but even the dogs eat of the crumbs under the table. And Jesus goes, you're right. So now who is included in the kingdom of God? Now, yes, it's the Jews. Oh, and now it's the Samaritans. Now, the Canaanites, the Phoenicians. And behind that issue is your who isn't included. Now this is a huge departure for, 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 for any Jew to make. It was bad enough dealing with the Samaritans for heaven's sake. But to include everyone. And of course this becomes a battle for, for the early church and, and how that works. And how that, but, but you see in this, in this remarkable instance Jesus confronted with a reality that had not been part of his upbringing. And his response? Yes. The child is healed. And so, the response of people to him is illustrative of what they experience in meeting him. Nicodemus. And he comes in and says, well, we know that you're from God and, and nobody could do all these all wonderful things that you do. And Jesus says, okay, but look, Nicodemus, it's, you have got to be born again. What? Um, how, how, do, how does it happen? And you, can't be, you can't enter again into your mother's womb. And Jesus says, oh, oh, baby. He says, you know, if you don't even understand this, and you, a leader, if you don't even understand, what's going to happen when I try to explain to you heavenly things? <laughs> See, think about it. Think about it. That in, in the, the very basics of a person who, in their soul, needs to experience a, a, a complete change of mind, complete change of direction and so on. You know, we call it uh, 
born again, we, we call it uh, conversion. We have various names for this actual event. But poor Nicodemus had the clue. It was not part of his vocabulary, it was not part of his understanding of what was necessary in order to enter into this new relationship with God that Jesus was describing. Because as far as the Jew is concerned, being born a Jew, circumcised a Jew, and therefore I was in. And Jesus says, It needs something more, and it, and that's something more, is a, a change of attitude, a change of heart, a change of heart, a, a seeking God. And so this is, um, you know, this is the kind of thing that happened around Jesus all the time. The leper comes to him, and Jesus says, "What can I do for you?" Well, what do you think a leper is going to say? What do you think a leper needs? But no, Jesus doesn't take it for granted. He says, what can I do for you? And he says, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus says, yeah, I do want you to be clean. It's, it's a, a wonderful little vignette, but what it shows is Jesus' respect for a person. It shows him, you his response. And of course, the joy of the leper who goes off and tells everybody and ruins everything. So um, it's in people's response that you really get the story of the voice of Jesus or the voices of those around Jesus and the difference that he, he made. It is the difference between the two that is remarkable, measurable. And actually it predicts a little bit of the way in which people afterwards came to grapple with who this person was because they wanted to put extravagant claims on him because the feelings about him were extravagant justifiably so they experienced this salvation much to their own surprise and therefore they had to give voice and words to describe that event and now we're stuck with their words and we're stuck with their um, the doctrines that evolved out of it. But that's another story.